Hey guys, so today I'm here to talk about the Otome Game Nightshade. Now, as of recording this, I've actually already talked about all of the different routes you can go on in the game with all the different guys, you know, all your different potential boyfriends. But I'm putting this one out first so that way you can decide if you even want to play this game. And if not, then you can go ahead and, watch and listen to all of my ranting about the routes carefree because, you know, it's kind of spoilery. You're going to at least get a decent amount of what's in the game. But I also decided to release this because my route reviews and discussions are actually very spoilery, as I previously mentioned. They got a lot going on in them, and I figured that if you were unsure of which character you would like the best or which character you might want to start with, I could explain it in this video so that way it would be non-spoilery so you can go ahead, pick a character you want to play through or whatever and then you can watch the review afterwards if you wanted to of that character like for instance Goro. You could play through Goro and then when you're finished then listen to me talk about him if you're interested so that way you don't end up getting spoiled. But so anyway, let's get into it. So Nightshade really is about a young shinobi named Enju. Enju is part of the Koga clan. She's the daughter of a Koga shinobi and an Iga shinobi, both of great importance, and she is considered a princess by her people. She's surrounded by her friends and her sensei, which is uh, Chojudo and her and her friends, as I just mentioned, being Inosuke, Kikamaru, Kyara, and Kasumi, and then later to join would be Kuryuki. She's sent out on her first mission ever by her dad. The mission is to figure out where the notorious thief Ishikawa Goemon is going to strike next. And then later on, it's also to capture Ishikawa Goemon once he evades the feudal era police. After capturing Goemon, things end up going awry, and at some point, Enju ends up on the run, labeled as a murderer, even though she did not commit the crime they're claiming she did. Depending on the route you choose, certain circumstances will be different, so from here on out, this is the end of the common route. The recommended play order for this, I'm not really sure. I suppose it would be something along the lines of Goro first, 100%. Goro is not very heavy into most of the plot revolving around any of the characters. Goro kind of has his own thing going on, so Goro is probably the least plotty, but also the best one to start with. Kodayuki and Gekamaru are definitely one of some of the last characters you want to play as because their stories are slightly different and I would argue that they're both kind of canon main guys. You know, if you've played an Ultimate game, you know very frequently they'll have one or like that one guy that you have to finish all the other routes to play through or it's that one guy that's usually recommended last because of how plotty and like involved in the plot his thing actually is. Well, for this game, it's both Kodayuki and Gekamaru for slightly different reasons. So 100%, those two should be saved for last. I did not do that. I played Kodayuki first. But you should definitely save Kodayuki and Gekamaru for last. As for Chojudo and Hanzo, as far as plot goes, I think you could really play them in either order. To be completely honest, you find out different, possibly Chojudo second and then Hanzo third. But if we're, ta if we're talking about the plot, perhaps. But if I'm being completely honest, I prefer Hanzo over Chojudo, so I would kind of say play Hanzo quicker, so second, because Ka Ch Goro and Hanzo were two of my top favorite routes from this game. So I guess my official recommended order might be something along the lines of Goro, Hanzo, Chojudo, and then either Kodayuki or Gekamaru, those could be interchangeable, really. Goro was kind of a flirtatious playboy libertine, but he really doesn't act that way with anybody but you in the route, so there's really no reason for your character to really be that jealous. Maybe in the very beginning he's a little bit more flirty with other people, but once his actual route starts, he's pretty much just focused on you. Hanzo is very serious and stoic, but he's actually a good boy at heart and very sweet, and helps the character grow as a person and as a shinobi. Very nice, very healthy relationship and I think they actually end up being pretty cute together. Be warned though, he he is a decent amount older than the main character. Goro, Chojudo, and Hanzo are all a decent amount older than the main character and uh, Hanzo's route might be slightly awkward because they do talk about his mom and how they kind of used to be friends and that is really just sort of a weird situation. So be warned that that might be a little weird for you but otherwise Hanzo's route is pretty great. Chojudo is your cousin, like your actual cousin, not just like you call him cousin. And he's also your teacher. He, once again, is also a little bit older than you, and it could be pretty awkward because you call him Brother Chojudo every time, so that's a little fucking weird. 
Chojito's character is also that of being somewhat stoic, very strict, and to be honest, I didn't really like his route so much. I feel like it, he was, it wasn't super romantic, and he really doesn't even show up that much in his own route. So really, I say only pick him if you like his aesthetic or anything like that, because as far as routes go, I think his is very weak. So I would kind of not do his immediately. If you stick to the route order, it should be fine. But be prepared for him, uh, at least for me, it's slightly underwhelmed. Go to Yuki is your childhood friend who was sent away eight years ago to go do some unknown mission, unknown training, and he's just recently come back. Um, the thing that you should know about his route is that it's kinda rough. Kodayuki does have some Yandere-ish tendencies, although there is a plot reason for it. So be warned, uh, he can be very aggressive and kind of seem like he doesn't care about the main character, and even at times seems like he's very much manipulating her, which he kind of does. But overall, I think it makes sense with the plot, and I think his plot in his route is actually very interesting and sheds a lot of light on certain happenings in the game so 100% his route is very interesting I don't know not everybody ends up liking this route but it is still an interesting route and I think it his character makes sense based on his backstory if you know what I'm trying to say so there's that lastly we have Gekamaru Gekamaru is your bodyguard and also childhood friend he's very very overprotective um, his route is kind of weird because he it almost seems like he's constantly struggling either to be your bodyguard or to be in love with you because you know he doesn't you're his master and he's just the servant I wouldn't say there's really that many romantic scenes in it because a lot of the time he ends up feeling weird about it because he is also your bodyguard so because that character kind of feels weird about it I kind of felt weird about it I mean as a character Gekamaru is perfectly fine but it kind of gets a little strange when he feels guilty over being in love with you in that way so that might be kind of an issue in that route for some people so just heads up overall my impression of the game is that it, it was good it's kind of a short game it has somewhere between like 11 12 or 13 chapters 11 to I guess 11 to 13 it has somewhere between 11 to 13 chapters depending on which characters you play but if I'm being completely honest half of that is just a common route up until about chapter 4 it's about a common route and then chapter 5 though it's technically the start of individual character routes it's practically identical across the board so that's a little disheartening to be quite frank. There are very few character choices in each chapter of any given route and some chapters have no choices at all which isn't the weirdest thing because Bad Apple Wars did something like that too but I don't think Bad Apple Wars is a very good game. It's, it's just a slightly strange and I think what bothers me a lot is that the plot between all the different routes is like extraordinarily similar. I mean there of course there are certain differences but it's like playing the same route like five times in a row which is also another reason why I didn't care about Bad Apple Wars but we'll get into that one I haven't even started talking about that one it's like it's kind of hard and then the and then you know the price of this game I got mine on the Nintendo Switch that's the one I wanted to play it I spent I think I spent about $47 on it because it's a little bit more it, it the price went down a little bit I'm sorry to say it's not worth $47. The plot is pretty good unless you have to play it five times in a row then maybe not so much and the art I think the art's the best part about this. I think the characters look amazing the art's really good maybe some CGs aren't the best but generally speaking seeing the scene the art the character models look really nice I really enjoyed them a lot of the CGs look great the music's okay and the sound effects for selecting stuff is awful and I hate it. And to be honest, if someone asked if I recommended this game in its current state, not really. I'm glad all of the characters are voiced and I'm glad the art's as good as it is and I'm glad that it had a decently interesting plot until you played it like five separate times and then you realize that it's too similar, you know? And that's the big gripe with it. It's about, it's almost about $50 but it's pretty short for what I think a $50 game should be quite frankly and then not only that but the characters their arcs their routes aren't that different from each other you know yeah okay Goro is a playboy and Chojido isn't but like the stuff or, or, or let me give a better example Goro, Goro is a playboy and Hanzo isn't but essentially it's the same thing in in both routes. What happens in both routes are 
pretty close to identical. The sequence of the events might be slightly different, but what actually is happening is practically the same, and I think that's what bothers me the most, because in a lot of other games, let's say Call or Ex Malice or what have you, there reaches a point where everything, like, changes. So if you're asking me if I think it's worth playing in its current state, my honest opinion would be no. The characters are fine, but the game is definitely too short, with a common route being half of the actual character's route. You know, out of 13 chapters, at least four of them are common route, then the fifth chapter is practically the same across the board. The music really isn't that memorable, the sound effects are god-awful, and quite frankly, once I finished the game, I didn't really feel the need to go back to it. I've played other Otome games before, I've played other visual novels before, and not like Danganronpa visual novels like this one, the romantic kind. I've played ones like Dramatical Murder, and I've played ones like Cholera X Malice, and typically the, I give a lot more of a shit about the characters in them. I revisit the CGs, I revisit my favorite scenes, there's usually some add-on content that I think is really nice, but even in this game there is some extra content. There are the memoirs, there's the, gal the gallery you can revisit, there's like extra scenarios, and I've played through them all and I feel like they really didn't add anything. A lot of what's going on, a lot of the like extra scenarios and memoirs that take place um, that you can that you can view for each character takes place during the route instead of what I would prefer which is after the route because it kind of just feels like a lot of the routes just sort of end very quickly you know once once you get to wherever the ending point is it's just like okay this is the end and I would have liked to see more of what happens afterwards and I felt like that really wasn't covered and that's not the worst thing it's just I felt like it would have done better instead of going over more of what was happening during the route and instead of and instead just focused on something like what happened after the route but you know I can't really change it now huh all in all I did think this was a pretty good game but I don't think it was a good $50 game I think this is more of a good $30 game quite frankly. It's probably 50 because of all the voice acting and such like that, but I still do not think it was worth the $50. I think if they were going to make this $50, they should have added more to each character's route, or maybe just more of the extra stuff in the game in general. But we didn't really get that, and so I really honestly can't recommend buying this full price. If you want to buy this either on, I think it's on the PC or on the Switch, definitely wait until there's a sale and get it, because it is not worth $50. The art, like I thought at least the art would have been worth the $50. It's not. Don't do it. It's not worth the $50. But anyway, that's what I thought of Nightshade. So uh, yeah, let me know if you played the game. Let me know if you what you thought of it in the comments below and I'll talk to you later. Bye bye!